All right, let's demonstrate how you set the feeder. So here's your feeder and your feeder table. Your feeder table has paper guides that can either move outward or inward on both sides, the gear drive side and the button operator side. So you have these paper guides that show you if you want to go outward or inward, if you want to go outward or inward. Here is the crank wheel for your feeder table. You have to push it in. If it's up on manual, you can take this table up or down. So if you want to go up or down, you turn the hand wheel for up or down. If you put this lever down for automatic, the table can only come up, hear it clicking, but it can't go down. It can only go up, but it can't go down. So to lower this table, this has to be up. Okay, get your paper, make sure it's cut to the correct size and is even. You take a sheet, fold it in half. The center mark of the fold should go to the zero on the ruler. Then you move your paper guides to just touch it. So this guide should be touching the paper. It should be square here. This guide should be about an eighth to a quarter inch away. That's too tight. The paper is buckling. That's way too loose. Somewhere is right around there. You can center this if you want. Make sure that your two copper separator fingers here are your two copper separator fingers here are good. You would move your side guide plate out. Move your rear tail spring out. Move your side guide springs out. Bring the paper up. Top of the paper pile to the top of the ruler. Top of the paper pile to the top of the ruler. Then, that was a manual adjustment. Now you would go to automatic, start to press, and let it stop by itself. Putting your fingers on here, you can feel when the pit table is moving up. Clear? Okay. The feeder pile has stopped. So you would bring your side guide over, touch your paper. Bring your springs to touch the paper. But the springs have to be between the wooden slot grooves. That would jam. That would jam. That would be fine. Rear spring, you want to make sure you're in the groove or the slot. Push that in forward. Center it up. This is critical here. If this is too far back, like this, the paper won't insert into the impression cylinder grippers. It'll be loose. Because it's loose, it'll transfer to the blanket, to the plate, and into your ink rollers. Okay, that's the, the initial setting for the feeder. Now what we would do is we would manually check the pile height. We want this to be one, uh, we want this to be about three eighths of an inch from the bottom top of the paper to the top of the vacuum sucker feet. Too close, one quarter inch, you get doubles. Too far away, half inch, you get skips or misfeeds. So you wanna be in between a quarter inch and a half inch, which is three eighths. That looks good. Now, if a vacuum sucker foot is off the sheet, the individual valve should be turned off. If the vacuum sucker foot is on the sheet, the valve should be open, 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 open. This is partially on, partially off. We're gonna close it, close it. Now we can turn on the vacuum sucker. We can see that the paper is being floated up to the two brass copper separator fingers. Keep turning the hand wheel counterclockwise. Engage your feeder lever forward. And now you can pick up a sheet. And that looks good. We're gonna start to press and test it. Clear. Turn the vacuum on. 
engage the feeder and you should be able to run continuously without any interruptions no jam ups or smash ups at the feeder no jam ups or smash ups at the delivery that looks good now if i disengage my automatic the paper pile won't raise and i'll stop feeding paper that's a common mistake that people make so they start making other adjustments don't do that engage automatic the feeder table will come up that's your pile height right closer father if i turn off the vacuum you'll stop feeding if i turn on the vacuum you'll feed the initial setting should be all the way maximum and then one full turn off lower blower air if i turn off the blower air you'll stop feeding 